Today I am showing you this incredible tune deck. Now make sure you subscribe to this channel for more Master Duel content. I see that only 20% of viewers actually subscribe. That's such a low number. My heart, my soul is shattered. Be sure to subscribe. With that being said, I do know when you see this, you're like, huh, this is not a real tune deck. I want real tunes. I want Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. I want, oh, speaking of Blue Eyes Toon Dragon, this. I want this. I want this in the deck. I want BLS. I want Red Eyes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I get it. I already made that deck profile though. If you want to see typical tunes, normal tunes the same list everyone else is running it's up on the youtube channel already however if i want to play a tune deck on stream and not brick every game this is what i'm playing instead this is for me way more fun this is my wacky build and there's also gameplay for this on my channel already so without further ado let's head into this profile we start off with two effect veiler now effect veiler isn't the greatest hand trap in here but the reason we have to run it is because we play Celine and access code so so effect failure, again, you can read all of this on your own time, but it it's an hand trap. It stops your opponent's um, monsters. But the important part is that it's a tuner and a spellcaster. So what you will often do is you will steal an opponent's monster with something like Comic Hand, which is an important tune card. And then you might normal summon effect failure or normal summon Ash even. Make Halk Fibrax. And then Halka Fibrax will special summon Effect Failure. Now you can link off the Effect Failure and the Halka Fibrax into this Selene. And then this Selene will special summon back your Effect Failure because you have a lot of spells in your graveyard, but we'll get to that. Which then allows you to make either an Appaloosa or a Access Code Talker. So basically, this gives Toons access to a strong extra deck monsters, which we usually don't. Normally, we are stuck with like these rank sevens and oh, that's cute, but it kind of just still sucks so for that reason it's very important that we have access to something like this <laughs> have access get it wow next we have three maxi maxi is absolutely broken also this deck is blind second as you can see in the title right here so we always want to go second and the more cards we can draw while our opponent combos off the more likely that we can break the board and then potentially otk so three maxi crucial one ash there's no real reason why it has to be one it's just that i wanted to play six hand traps and we have three maxi we definitely needed the Veiler for the Selene combo. So the third is the Ash. If you want to be sure you can always do a Selene combo, this could also be a third Veiler because we do play Pot of Desire. So if you Desire's banish top 10, you might end up losing both Veilers. It doesn't happen often, but it can happen. Next, we have two Toon Mermaid. Yeah, I know people see this profile and go, oh, you're, you're barely running any tunes. Most tunes just suck. <laughs> this Toon Mermaid, however, is pretty good because it's a water and it's a rank. It's a level four. So so if you have two Toon Mermaid, which is very easy because we have six Toon Searchers, you can actually special summon both of them and then overlay them into Bahamut Shark because it's a rank four water. And then you can use Bahamut Shark's effect to special summon Totally Awesome. And now we have a negate. So even if we have to go first, we can actually set up a decent board with negates and that good stuff. Double Toon Mermaid for that reason. If we're forced to go first, we can literally still set up this. And in the TCG, we can actually do even more because if we have like double Toon Mermaid and one more extender, even a normal summon. We can go Mermaid, make Bahamut Shark, Bahamut Shark spits out a totally, and then your normal summon or one more regular summon makes a uh, Verte Anaconda together with the Bahamut, and then that way you can make Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer. So then your end board is a totally awesome and Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, which is not bad, you know. Uh, so yeah, Toon Mermaid for that reason. Then we have two Toon Harpy Lady. Again, the reason we play this is it's a level four that you can special summon. So the fact that we have four monsters that are four and special summonable means we can make rank fours pretty easily. So we can make Abyss Dweller, which auto wins certain matchups. And we can also make Bugushka, which is a negate. Beyond that, we can also make Duggarus. We'll get to that later. But yeah, being able to make rank fours is really good. Also means we can make Zeus. If they have like an unbreakable board, we can break it with these tunes, funnily enough. For the final tune monster, we have Toon Cyber Dragon. Now Toon Cyber Dragon, it basically works like a regular Cyber Dragon. You special summon this out. And then if you're a opponent has something important in their extra monster zone, like their link zone, let's say. Usually it's going to be a strong link monster, maybe a link 3, a link 4. You can special summon this and then instantly link that off into Chimera Tech Mega Fleet. So this way, you actually always have access in this deck to a out for a strong link monster. And since we have a bunch of searchers, like we have 6 searchers, we basically have 7 cards that lead to that. So that's really solid. That's why you have to play this as a Toon player. That lets you out the bigger boards that are very scary. Next we have Lava Go in here. So as you noticed, we don't really tend to normal summon much. The only 
time you would normal summon is if you're going to do the Selene access code play, or if you're in the TCG, you might also need to do that. But so in this deck, we don't tend to normal summon. We uh, basically use Lava Golem to break boards. So you can sacrifice two things on your opponent's board to give them a Lava Golem. And now you out it way scarier monsters, maybe something with negates, with anti-destruction, with floating, with whatever they have. If your opponent is playing Drytron, they have like that scary Herald of Ultimateness with 10 billion negates, you know, tribute it, make a Lava Golem, GG, easy, right? Now, that also means your opponent now has a 3,000 monster with no protection, meaning you can uh, use Comic Hand to steal it. And now you have a 3,000 monster with protection because Toon Kingdom gives it protection because Comic Hand turns the Lava Golem into a Toon. So now you have a Toon Lava Golem. Very cute. Next, we have one Monster Reborn. Monster Reborn is just a power card, but beyond that, it also serves another purpose. If your opponent used a Hand Trap at any point, whether it's an Ash, you know, on you or a Veiler or, or something like that, then you can Monster Reborn into your side of the field to make that Halk of Fibrax. Or if your opponent used any tuner, right? Maybe they're a Tenyi deck, maybe they're a Dragonling deck, whatever it is, you can Monster Reborn the tuner to your side of the field to do that Halk of Fibrax combo with it. And that way you, you can now do it without normal summoning. So yeah, still pretty solid card. And we have three Toon Table of Contents. This is the Searcher. This searches any Toon card. However, it cannot search Comic Hand because Comic Hand is not a Toon card, sadly. However, you can use Toon Table of Contents to look for Toon Bookmark, which is this card, and then that will look for Comic Hand. Next, we have three Pot of Desires. I was so sad when this when this was banned in the TCG. This single-handedly made Toon so much worse because we need that extra card. Our deck is much lower value than real meta decks. Real meta decks have one card that is actually worth three or four cards. All our cards are worth one, or maybe not even one. <laughs> when you go second, you have an extra card, you have six, but then you kind of want Pot of Desires to have seven. That is how we are able to out boards more easily, so you really want to desire them. Next, we have Engage. So as you can see, this Toon deck also has a Sky Striker package. The reason for that is pretty simple. Toons have Toon Table of Contents and Toon Bookmark, so that means means we can actually fill our graveyard with spells pretty easily. If you draw one Toon Table of Contents, you can do Toon Table, looking for Toon Table, looking for Toon Table, and now you have three spells in graveyard, meaning you get the full effects of Sky Striker just like that. So this is an inherent synergy with Toons, and so we have to play the Striker package, because suddenly, instead of opening with six cards, you could open with eight, because of how crazy Engage is. So if you don't know what Engage does, it basically searches for other Sky Striker spell. However, if you have three spells in the graveyard, it also draws you a card. So again, you use Toon Table, look for Toon Table, look for Toon Table, or, or Toon Table into Toon Table into Bookmark. Now you can engage, and then you can search a spell and draw a card. So that's one turning into two. It's basically a strong pot of greed. However, it gets better, because engage can also look for Hornet Drones. Hornet Drones gives you a token. That token turns into this link, Kagari, and then Kagari adds back this engage. Now you engage again, look for Widow Anchor, and draw another card. So just like that, you engaged twice. You resolved two Pot of Greeds in this deck just like that, just because our Toon spells set up the graveyard that easily. So that is why this is a crucial part of the strategy. Beyond that, it searches you Widow Anchor, which is a monster steal. It also has a negate, but because we always have the spells in graveyard, it's also a steal. So we don't just have three Comic Hand, we also have two Widow Widow Anchor. That is five ways for us to steal opponents' monsters. So if you watch the anime back in the day with Pegasus always grabbing opponents' monsters and you think this deck isn't the real Toon deck, this is more real Toon than anything else out there. If you're playing one comic hand, you don't even know who Pegasus is at this point. So yeah, we play the five monster stealers in true Toon fashion. Then we have one Afterburner. This is kind of the weaker striker card in this deck. Like really, ideally, you have your engages, you have your anchors, even Hornet Drones is pretty solid. Afterburner can destroy a phase up monster and then after that it can destroy a spell and trap. So you can play around skill drain, you can play around all sorts of things. You can you just kind of have built-in removal. And again, because engage looks for anything, this means by playing just the one afterburner, you can now search it. And so you have three cards that serve as afterburners. Next we have 
Lightning Storm. The reason we play Lightning Storm is because this deck can break monster boards really well, but it can't break spell and trap boards really well. So having two Lightning Storm at least gives us a bit more of a fighting chance. You could argue for running even more of them. That's fine. Now we have two triple tactics talents. This card is crazy going second because your opponent is going to basically try to negate some of your stuff, right? And so then you go, oh, you negated some of my stuff. Okay, either I draw two cards, again, Pot of Greed fashion, or I take one of your monsters. So once again, in true Pegasus fashion, we now have seven monster stealing cards with this triple tactics talents. It also has something that like gets rid of a card from their hand. Sometimes that comes up, but usually you're going to use one of the first two effects. So triple tactics talent, really good for breaking boards. You're already running so much stuff. They're going to try to negate it at some point, And now you have even more follow up thanks to this card. Next, we have Toon Bookmark. Oh, look at that royal finish. I was so happy pulling this. What a beautiful card. So this searches for any Toon card, including, and this is pretty important, the comic hand. The only thing this doesn't search is Toon Table of Contents, because Toon Table of Contents doesn't mention Toon World in its text, which is pretty sad. If this could search Toon Table, that'd be incredible. Then we would always have full striker plays, which is really strong. Toon Bookmark, really solid card, gets us our comic hand, which then lets us steal opponent's boards. So we have our comic hand right here. Then we have three Toon Kingdom. Toon Kingdom protects Toons. Now you may notice, hey, none of your boards actually end on Toons, right? Like you special summon these Toons out, but they then go away into a Behemoth or a Totally Awesome, a Zeus, Begushka, maybe Access Code and so forth. And that's true. However, there will always be a Toon monster on your field because Comic Hand actually turns the thing you steal into a Toon. Just like in the anime, you grab a Lava Golem, that thing is now Toon Lava Golem and now he's soft and cute and squishy. So that Toon Lava Golem or whatever you end up stealing becomes a Toon monster, meaning Toon Kingdom will actually protect it. So the only way they can now get rid of it is by killing the Comic Hand rather than killing the monster. If you are playing the TCG and you try to make a deck like this, you might want to consider actually playing regular Toon World. And I know the amount of times people have tried to talk shit on that, but hear me out here. If you are playing things that you don't want to lose, like a Dragoon package, a Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer package, maybe you, you only have one engage like in the TCG. Desires is already kind of hurting you. All right, but let's say you're not desiring. Do you really want to banish top three phase down and then lose your important pieces like your Dragoon package, your DPE package? I don't think so. And if you're not really ending on any Toon Monsters anyway, what value is this even providing? So for that reason, there's an argument for actually playing old Toon World. Now in this deck, again, we don't have Dragoon. We don't have a DPE package, so it's fine to play Kingdom, but in real life, I don't know, consider it. Next, we have our Hornet Drones. Hornet Drones creates the token, which then lets us make Kagari. This is the only reason this deck even plays Kagari, because we don't have any Sky Striker monsters. But again, being able to go engage, look for Hornet Drones, draw a card, Hornet Drones, make Kagari, grab back, engage, engage, look for Widow Anchor, draw a card again. That's a really solid play that you still want access to. Finally, we have our worst comic hand, like I said, Said, this is two more monster stealers. Of course, you can also just negate with it. That does come up. But in an ideal scenario, you see your opponent's board, you see like, wow, that's three really strong monsters. And they're mine now. <laughs> that is what this deck tries to do. For the extra deck, we have one Chimera Tech Mega Fleet. Like I explained, you can take one monster in the extra monster zone from your opponent. So you special summon a Toon Cyber Dragon and then you just fuse off that thing in order to make your own Mega Fleet. Then we have the one totally awesome. This is a negate that afterwards gives you back the Toon Mermaid. So you get some follow-up after it and it's uh, yeah, it's a negate. Why, why would you not make a negate, right? So we have the Bahamut Shark which is how we make the Totally Awesome. You detach one and then you special summon a rank 3 or lower Water Xyz monster which is always going to be Totally. Then we have one Abyss Dweller. So all of this extra stuff doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is once per turn quick effect, detach one material from this card. Your opponent cannot activate any card effects in their graveyard which is essentially all the meta decks. They all have graveyard effects you just use a Biz Dweller and it's shut off. It's incredible. You can make this with just two level fours. And like I said, all these tunes, they can special summon the, themselves. So together they make our Abyss Dweller. So your opponent is using Eldritch, Phantom Knights, forms of Tri Brigade, all that good stuff. Too bad. Abyss Dweller shuts it off. Then we have Bagushka. So you set this in defense usually, and then it turns off all the effects basically. It does die to removal. So that's sad. But sometimes this, you know, gives you an extra turn to get set up and not die, let's say. 
Then we have one Duggarus, this is another rank four. So this has three abilities. You can basically choose which one you want. So the first ability is skip your next draw phase, draw two cards and discard one. So basically if you're bricking, you can overlay your mermaid and your harpy lady into this and then draw two cards and discard one. So maybe that gives you the out to win. Skip your next main phase one, special summon one monster from your graveyard in defense. We never really use that. And then the other effect is skip the battle phase of the next turn, but double the attack of one monster you control. So this does come up. Sometimes you're like, oh, okay, I'll use my Duggarus to double my Lava Golem. Now I have a 6,000 Lava Golem and I enter life. That does come up. You can also just use that on some other monster that you maybe stole to make it big and win the game. Next, we have Zeus. Zeus can be made with any of your other Xyzes, and then you can just wipe the entire board, which can be really good if they have too much destruction protection. We have our Kagari. Like I said before, this is how you recycle your Engage. We have our Halka Fibrax. Like I said before, you make it with any of your tuners or an opponent's tuner. And then it looks for Valor. And then together with Valor, it makes Selene. And then Selene summons back Valor. And then that makes Access Code or Boral Sword or Appaloosa. Then we have Repodocus. This was just the most generic link I could find that can be made with two monsters. Because a lot of links say, oh, it can't be a token. Oh, it can't be this. Oh, it can't be that. And so since we are always using our opponent's monsters, you don't always know what your opponent may have. For that reason, it had to be something generic like this. Also, if you make a Kagari and then you horn a drones, that makes another token. That's two monsters. That doesn't lead to anything when all of your links say no tokens. And this one doesn't. So you're able to Kagari out of Horned Drones, and then Horned Drones makes another token. Horned Drones always makes Reprodocus, and that way you can link climb into maybe stronger place. Now it's possible there's a better link too, I just maybe don't have it. <laughs> Next we have Unicorn. This is again solid for breaking boards, but the main reason that I'm running it, again it's two monsters, two plus monsters with different names, so again it can use tokens, it can use random crap we stole from our opponent, but of course you can also spin something so it also has a good effect. Very often, together with something else, this can still make an access code talker. Next, we have Selene. Selene is just here to do the Halka Fibrax play. It's very hard to make this otherwise. You could steal a Link 2 from your opponent and normal summon your effect failure. Sure, I guess, and then make it. It's ideally in the Halka Fibrax play. This basically gets spell counters for every spell engrave, and we have a bunch of spells engraved because of all our tune cards. And then that way, um, special summons out the effect veiler, and together you make a free Link 4 essentially. And then we have the Link Force here. We have Boral Sword Dragon, which is great for OTKs. We have Appaloosa, which is just a bunch of negates on legs. I will say very often this isn't very strong. If you do the Selene play and Selene gets spits out something together, they just make an Appaloosa with only 1,600 attack. So a lot of decks can just normal summon an attack over it. But sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And then we have the access code, which is probably the best thing we have access to. Being able to destroy stuff on our opponent's board and then probably OTK. So this this is the wackier tune deck. We are playing 17 tune cards. That's almost half the deck. I think that qualifies. It's a lot of fun. I play this on stream very often and I think I'll actually have gameplay of this deck up on the channel either before this video goes live or right after it. So be sure to subscribe to this channel and check that out. I will see you soon. Ciao.